Hey guys, welcome to another MapleStar 2 video and today I'm going to be making a video on some quick and easy tips on making more Meso in MapleStar 2. Now I did make a video on how to make Mesos for beginners, but uh, in this video it's going to be just a couple more tips I can show you guys on how to make just a little bit more income. And um, it's not the most effective way to make income in the sense of like you're not going to be making too much, but it's not as RNG based as like trying to farm pets and getting like an epic pet and selling that for 200 mil. That's kind of like hitting the lottery almost. And it, there's definitely a lot more investment that's being put into farming for pets. I am aware of the method, and I do know that if you were to go ahead into the black market, search pets, then check the price up, you can very easily run into pets that are, quite frankly, a couple hundreds of millions of meso. And before you go crazy and say like, oh my god, I gotta go ahead and do it myself, it's not worth it. I don't think it's worth it. Like, it's a luck-based thing. What I'm going to be teaching you is more, not, it's not necessarily luck-based, but mine's going to be a bit more consistent way to make meso. Meso, meso, you know, I, I, yeah, I can't. Alright, I'm just going to call it meso just because meso is a bit too much more strain on pronunciation. Okay, so anyways, there are four ways I'm going to show you how to make um, meso. The first method, actually, I do confess it will regard pets. I know I said it's not going to be pets like, you know, farming for epic pets, but the one that I'm going to be going for are not epic pets, but regular pets, like as in like basic pets, or even things like, um, let me go ahead and show you like the exceptional pets. Reason being is because these are a bit better when it comes to farming for some decent amount of meso. They're about a couple hundred K each. The epic ones are a couple hundred mil, but the chances of you getting them are very low. Now, why these over like the usual method of farming pets? Well, that's just because whenever you do bosses in the hard dungeons and even the chaos dungeons, you have a chance of getting the pet itself. Which means I'm gonna show you right here. You can get the Pyrosphard Combat Pet, you can get the Cabo Combat Pet, you can get the Varricane Combat Pet, Top of Immortals Pet, that's Balrog, and you can get Nutamon here, and you can also get Kandura. And uh, in the Chaos Raids, if you ever do them, you can get Chaos Dvorak, you can get Chaos Captain Mach, and you also get Populatus, which I'm actually really looking forward to because I like this guy so much. Um, so whenever you do hard adventures, and if you've been doing them already, which you should be doing, you can get these pets, and if you're wondering what to do with them, uh, if you have like a lot of them, then you can go ahead and sell them for a decent amount of meso. Meso, meso. I'm just going to be like saying both of them at the same time. So in terms of like how much they're worth, these are uh, pets that you'll end up finding when you tame yourself, but the boss pets like Varakent, Pyrosvard, it's quite a bit Kandura here, uh, I think there should be Balrog right here as well. Does anyone actually do Nuntaman, I wonder? I don't think anyone does. No, not really. There's also Cabo here as well. These pets sell for roughly about 500,000 meso, and um, if you can get like a couple of them, on average, you get maybe about one or two per 15 runs, or around, I would say I average about like three per 30 runs, so let's say it's like a 10% chance to get a pet. And you might be thinking that's not worth it too much, but the reason why that is is just because, remember, when it comes to MMORPGs, if this is your first time playing an MMO, everything is cumulative, meaning you can't really expect to see large jumps in improvement here and there. It's more of a very slow and consistent rise to improving your character, which is why this is not the most effective means of making meso because it's slow and you don't get too much, but it's there, it does exist. Now the second method I'm going to show you is to do normal dungeons. You might be thinking, what's the point of doing normal dungeons if they don't really give you too much versus like a hard or a chaos dungeon? And uh, you don't want to do this on your main character, you want to do this on an alt character, just because normal dungeons are really really easy to do. And unlike hard dungeons where only a very select few pieces of equipment are tradable and are usually very rare to get, like the uh, Nutama's earrings or the Kandura pendant, normal dungeon epic items you run into quite often actually, you can get quite a few if you're lucky. And um, the weapons, even though they've depreciated a ton since the game first came out, you can still get them for quite a decent amount of meso. So here you go, let me show you. Okay, here we go. So, wow, they appreciate it so much. Um, normal dungeon epic weapons are really easy to come by. You start to run into quite a few of them, roughly about the couple hundred K mark. And um, if you do them on your alts, which take about, I would say like four to five minutes each per run, maybe less if you're a little bit stronger, or if you have like a good party, you'll run into quite a few decently priced weapons. Uh, some of them are more expensive than others. More Acrian Bow, Amadon Scepter, Acrian's Cannon, that's also higher up. Wily's one, Willy's one card, not Wily, Willy's one card deck, it goes up to about a mil. So you can get quite a few meso from here as well. Additionally, while you might think these exceptional pieces of equipment are not that expensive, they actually run for a quite a decent price given how common they are. Let me go ahead and show you. So these pieces of equipment, they drop for also a pretty decent price and chunk of meso. And if you do them on your alts, which takes about just only a few minutes per run, you can get quite a few of these because remember, you can do 15 dungeons per day. And uh, if you stack that up along with how many, however many alts you want to pick up, you can get quite a few pieces of equipment. And once again, if you do get lucky and get some decently powerful, um, uh, you know, epic equipment from this dungeon, 
then you can sell that as well. Alternatively, you can use it on your own character. It's certainly a lot more consistent than farming these dungeons for specific types of weapons, like um, except the Kendota Pendant, or the Nutaman's Earrings, or Varrican Wings and Horns. Those do go for an extremely high amount of meso. So if you get lucky and you get those, then it's definitely worth quite a bit of meso. Uh, I personally think, well, if you're doing it on your main, then you obviously can. If you're doing it on your main and you already have your weapons maxed out, then at that point, the only thing you should be doing is doing the dungeons that get you a decent amount of meso over here, or by getting like a big gear, or to just go for absolute gear fragments like uh, the cape, the pendant, and the ring and belt. Why I advise selling these items like the Varrican Wings or Kindura Pendant is because if you roll very good bonus attributes on your absolute accessories, then they can actually be more powerful than these accessories because these things do not come with any predetermined uh, potentials. Like Varrican Wings does not have any bonus potential to it. The only exception is Balrog. Balrog Wings, they do have a fixed bonus attribute as in they will always get piercing and melee damage. The only difference is that it gives you piercing and melee damage, two of the most powerful attributes in the game. So these things can go for an insanely high amount of meso. Uh, these are really, really good. As for like whether or not you want to equip it yourself, if you're a melee class, I do recommend equipping it because equipping a very powerful base piercing and melee damage Balrog Wing is best in slot. But if you're playing a ranged class, then you either can give this to an alt or you can sell it for a large amount of meso. For your alt characters, if you feel like if you have just like some extra spare time and you don't mind grinding a little bit, then you can get some pretty valuable weapons and also just sell the regular items yourself, like these weapons, or not these weapons, these um, exceptional pieces of equipment for a couple 5 digit K each. And then eventually it will add up over time. Okay, and uh, there is two more. There are two more ways I can show you how to make meso. The first one is life skills. Life skills can actually be quite profitable. Um, I haven't been doing it too much myself in terms of like crafting stuff, but you can craft quite a few important consumables like the special warrior tonic and the special mage tonic. These things will take a while for you to get there because you have to be rank 13 um, alchemy, but if you were to put them up in the black market, these tonics go for a really good chunk of meso each. They are a little bit expensive to make, about you need quite a few bloom dusts, um, but in terms of getting the essences, they're not that expensive. They do cost 26k each to make, but that sets a price floor, which means the price will never go under. You can see the prices being quite consistent in uh, most of these potions. Although now a lot of people know about this, which is why the price is starting to drop down quite a bit. Back when I was like first looking into this, they were about a couple hundred k each actually. But around now, they're starting to de deflate a little bit. However, since people are using them so much, the price will stay relatively consistent, plus the price floor. Leave for it to go to Warrior Tonic. Oh yeah, Warrior Tonics are really, really good. Um, so if you can, be sure to make the Warrior Tonics. Mage Tonics are good too, but the Warrior Tonics are even better. And they have the exact same ingredients. So if you might as well just make the Warrior Tonic. Because uh, they're exact same ingredients. And they go for 100k each. So that's a pretty consistent stream of meso you got right there. And uh, you can also craft a few other things. If you go into handicrafting, you can craft savagery accessories. And you see them in the black market as I showed you earlier, and they're not that valuable. But you have nothing really else better to craft with these items that you get. And um, you can sell them for quite a few. So if I were to go ahead and craft 3 savagery rings, 6 savagery necklaces, that's about 100k profit right there. Because if that's like 90k plus if I were to sell for 20 or 20 to 25k each. Also, if you get a very valuable web, uh, accessory, now these Savagery gear, they come with a very low base price, however their potential for profit can go very high up if they have very good attributes, let me show you right now. This Savagery ring, or not, that's a bad one, but this Savagery ring right here has 4% piercing and 2% boss damage. You can either equip this yourself, or sell it for a large chunk of meso. So if you can get lucky and get really good attributes, these things can easily rise up to 7, 8, even 9 digit meso. So like, even something like this, which is not the mo- or like something like these, which are not the most difficult to come by, will sell you a good 20 mil or so. So this is luck based, but it's not as demandingly luck based as the epic pet, because epic pet is even worse. To do this, you just have to collect all of these um, ingredients, which you can place inside your house. I'm going to go to my house right now. And there you go. You see these uh, players who have a whole bunch of these square gardens. You just got to harvest these every single day, along with if you were to go into your life skills and go into your gathering and go into your foraging and your mining, you can get those there as well. Then you can also craft savagery equipment. Savagery equipment is good for not necessarily selling, but for also selling to like, giving to your other characters. That way you don't have to go ahead and like buy them yourself. But even if you do decide to sell them, like I said, they're good a couple like 40-50k each, which means you can get quite a bit of meso. Not nearly as much as if you were to get an epic pet for and sell for like 500 mil, but like I said, I focus more on consistency, not necessarily like doing the lottery and striking it rich. And the last way to do it is a method everyone knows about is farming for potion solvents, yes. These things, these wonderful things. Potion solvents can be farmed anywhere throughout the map that 
Potion solvents can be farmed from any monster around your level, which means you just gotta go ahead and find any area that you can get more potion solvents in. Well, these are most, uh, all right, four. You might be thinking like, okay, they're potion solvents. Why aren't they used for potions like in alchemy? Right here, you don't use potion solvent at all. What you actually use it for is for pet taming. The very same people who are trying desperately to get those epic, po uh, epic pets are buying these potion solvents to make snares. And you can sell them for a good chunk of meso each. I believe you can average around maybe about, I don't exactly know how many, but it's like 40 per hour or something. And uh, no, it's not 40 per hour. It's definitely way more than 40 per hour. Uh, some, some around like 80 or 90. I don't, I've never done potion solvent farming myself, but it's a very simple way to do it. Just got to go ahead and kill monsters and around your level. A good place to farm them around your level would probably be, I like to go to Igloo Hill. Igloo is really nice. Uh, you got about 55 or so, and it's also a very peaceful place to farm. So this one's going to be added in post commentary just because of, um, I actually forgot about this method. And uh, when I left for Thanksgiving vacation, I was like, oh crap, well, I have to wait until I get back to add it in. But that's why I'm adding it right now. So another way that you can make a decent amount of meso as well as earn a couple other interesting things like green and blue crystals, which you need to then reroll your equipment's bonus attributes is to do area bosses or uh, world bosses. So I'm sure you guys have seen this before already. I did make a video on how to get to level 60 very quickly. Uh, one of the faster ways to do it is to do area bosses from 50 to 60 in a large party. And uh, another thing you can do is that these can actually be quite lucrative. So apart from you needing to get them for the sake of picking up your green and blue crystals, which is what you need to reroll accessories and armor pieces, you can also get a good amount of meso from these bosses, about like somewhere around the five digit meso value. Usually I've been able to pick up a good 20 to 30k worth of meso per time I did the boss, and especially because a lot of people are going really crazy about these bosses, more specifically in the Karkar Islands, because those bosses have the same level range as you. You can expect to get like 30 to 40 people for these bosses and they're just like gunning it. They go through like an entire like maybe 10 or 12 bosses in a matter of less than like 20 minutes. It's really really fun. Those of you guys who do have a toaster for a computer, I do apologize. I don't think you can really handle this too much, but if you can, just uh, one thing you could do to make it a little less laggy for yourself is to turn down players. In the footage I have right now, this is old footage, but um, you can turn down players by like, you know, completely uh, hiding players, hiding name tags and stuff. And that really does help with getting rid of lag just because you don't have to render all the animations and all the players that are going about. Now, you are guaranteed to get meso just by contributing to the boss fight. However, in order to get the green and blue crystals, which aren't necessarily for making meso, it's just more for being able to reroll your item's potentials, you do need to contribute a certain amount of the boss's maximum HP as damage. So, in other words, the more people that are there, the harder it's going to be for you to get your damage through. But if we were to just only focus on the meso aspect, you can expect to get a good 20 to 40k worth of uh, meso. I, it's not like the most profitable thing out there, but it's certainly a lot more fun to do than farming potion solvents all the time. That is a method though. The only thing you do have to keep in mind is that uh, you gotta make sure that you know exactly when these bosses spawn. When you click on areas that have area bosses that are spawning, you get to see what time they spawn in. I do believe that's on UTC, which means if you're Eastern time, the time that they display is 4 hours earlier, so if it spawns at let's say 2.15 a.m. UTC, then for Eastern Time it's going to be around I think 10.15, for Pacific it's going to be 7.15, to my knowledge. I'm not entirely sure how the time zones work, but for the most part, yeah, you do need to plan ahead. Mostly just because when these bosses spawn, they spawn in every single channel, however, there's a certain timer that passes, and after like, I think, was it like 20 or 20, no, 15 to 20 minutes? They all disappear. So you gotta be very, very quick about getting as many bosses as you can done. With enough luck, you can get around maybe, I would say my fastest amount of bosses I've ever been able to get was 10 or so per session. And uh, that's roughly about, you know, a couple hundred K, which means if you do that, and also because there are different bosses around, you can do this multiple times per day and uh, the rotations will respawn every so often. So however much time you decide to put into these bosses is how much mess you're going to get out of it. But I guess the best circumstances for being able to take out these bosses is to join them when a whole bunch of people are going after them. Fortunately, at least from my understanding, NA East and NA West are almost always uh, fully packed, especially with the boss raids. So you can expect to catch up and get like a decent amount of drops here and there. It's just more a case of like, if you can plan ahead and if you do have a guild, that helps out as well. But yeah, that's another way you can make meso by farming uh, area bosses. But that's about it, just a few more tips on how I wanted to show you guys how to make meso. Not the most, I guess, glamorous tips out there, there are definitely way better ways to make meso. But for me, just to help out the little guy, if you guys are looking for just a few easy and simple ways to make more meso that are very consistent, you can expect to get a very nice, solid, and reliable stream of income, then you can do it like that. So just to recap, one of the ways to do it is to sell your hard dungeon boss pets. 
The next thing is to go and do normal dungeons on your alt accounts, as well as craft savagery gear from your life skills. And the final way of getting Mesa is to farm for potion solvents. So I do apologize I was rambling a lot in this video, like I said, for guide videos like these I would normally do a script and get them done in a very structured manner. I know I don't have to be making videos over Thanksgiving break, or at least like schedule them ahead of time, but I don't want to leave you guys the entire vacation without any videos, so hope you guys don't mind. And uh, yeah, it's going to be leaving it off there. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys again in the next video. Take care.